Hello again and welcome, come back to the Digital Health and Wearable series. Another fantastic episode for you today and I have another magnificent guest. But before I go ahead with that, I'd like to acknowledge our global partners and uh, sponsors, Spirit Digital. Please check them out and also share the great content with your communities in healthcare. We've got previous guests and also a great episode for you today. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Daniel Kraft which is one of the leading health tech influencers. Most of you probably know him already, but Daniel, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you uh, virtually. Hopefully I'll meet you in the real world soon. Yeah, we never we never met uh, before. I follow your great work and the things that you've been doing over the years. So thank you so much for your time and nice to be connected. Great to be here and congrats on your on your work as well. Brilliant. So, Daniel, the first question that I have for you is, what do you see happening in digital health right now? Anything jumping out for you? Well, of course, you know, we're talking here in March, April of 2021. We're a year into the pandemic. And obviously, uh, everyone says, you know, the pandemic has been a great catalyst for digital health. Um, and I think that is generally true. I mean, the fact that we've had to adapt uh, how we do our regulations, how we do our payment models, how we do virtualized care. Uh, a bit of the silver lining of the pandemic is that we've uh, sped up some of the things that were sometimes stuck. And that sort of integrates in with digital, mobile, connected health. And we'll just call it health. Um, and uh, I think, you know, it, it's hopefully going to leave some positive elements for post pandemic or hopefully help us prevent future ones. Um, I've been sharing the XPRIZE Pandemic Alliance Task Force. And part of what we're trying to do is. Uh, through the XPRIZE Pandemic Alliance, you know, collaborate between, you know, academics, startups, big companies, small companies to try and connect the dots, you know, in digital health and beyond so that we're um, speeding up and moving from incremental health care to, to exponential. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's so much to address, but I do agree with you that actually the pandemic kind of accelerated and highlighted some of the things that we could be doing or should be doing anyway. So fantastic. Thank you. And the second question that I have for you, there is much talk and focus around AI. Everybody's talking around AI. It's a bit of a buzzword, to be honest. But the big question is, will uh, technology replace doctors? What is your insight on that? Well, like any, any technology, it has sometimes hype and hope. And, you know, AI is, or I like to call it IA, intelligence augmentation, as opposed to artificial intelligence, is really, I think, best at its combination, you know, helping uh, a clinician, a patient themselves, a community health worker, leverage all the new, let's say, exponential data and sensors and wearables and omics and make sense of it uh, at the point of care or in the setting of a clinical trial or in managing a pandemic. So I'm not sure who made the original phrase, but I'll steal it, which is that, you know, AI is not going to replace the doctor, but the doctor using AI will replace those who don't, or the nurse, or the practici nurse practitioner, or the pharmacist. And so I think given that we're now in this age of you know incredible technology, but it's almost overwhelming, uh, particularly all the data that doesn't always translate into insights or actual information, we need AI and machine learning and big data to help us combine forces to better pick the optimal prevention regimen, or do a smarter job at early diagnostics, or truly drive precision personalized therapy. And of course, AI crosses everything from drug discovery to making sense of the data from your wearables. So I think it's not about replacement, but more of a combination. And just like in, you know, you know, chess, you know, it was a big deal when Deep Blue from IBM beat Gary Kasparov, uh, you know, I don't know, 15 years ago, you know, with a computer beating a chess master. But later they could show that, you know, chess players working with the computer uh, could beat the computer alone. So I think it's, again, a combination of forces. Um, and it's not about replacing, but augmenting. Oh, fantastic. I really agree with you. And, and a few years ago, we had, we had the technology and AI and other things. We didn't have enough data, but now we have data and the combination of actually then a bit of a book, a book chapter on this, the combination of uh, data and artificial intelligence will be the game changer in, in healthcare, but fantastic insight. And the third and last question for you, Daniel, is what caught your eye recently with regards to digital health innovation? 
Well, I think it's about connecting the dots. There's no like one solution. There's no uh, uh, one wearable or one app or one uh, digital health platform that is the element, but partly catalyzed by COVID, we're starting to connect the dots and, and go from sort of spot elements uh, to creating integrated uh, elements that address tra challenges in healthcare. Um, so what's caught my eye? I think, um, you know, clearly the fact that some of the big insurance companies, the payers, you know, who have the incentives are starting to pay for and reward some of these new digital health technologies. I think there's still a challenge. We talked about data for a second earlier. You know, no clinician, no doctor, nurse or, or pharmacist even wants more data. They want the actual insights. The data alone could be overwhelming. So we need to integrate these into the workflow and align the incentives. So we're starting to see the alignment incentives with payment models. We're starting to show that digital health can lead to better outcomes in some settings. It's not a panacea. Just prescribing someone a Fitbit or an Apple Watch doesn't mean they're going to lose weight or prevent a heart attack. Um, but I think now we're seeing uh, uh, this emergence of you know FDA and CE marked apps, wearables, devices, solutions. The challenge is there's a lot of these coming out, and just because uh, it might be available or approved doesn't mean it's being utilized. So one area that I've been working on, given I'm always asked, you know, what wearable is best for me or what solution for diabetes or hypertension is to try and make sense of what's already out there. So I've recently uh, launched a platform called digital.health. That's the domain. Um, and the goal is to be a bit of a home for digital health and to help find solutions and be a bit of a digital health formulary uh, for clinicians of all sorts, not, not focused on consumers or patients. But if you're a doctor uh, and you've got a patient with hypertension, depression, uh, and diabetes, could you find uh, an app to help them meditate and prescribe that or connect a blood pressure cuff or other tools that might be useful uh, to use for remote management or to help connect the dots and data back to your clinical care. So that's something that's uh, recently uh, been relaunched. Uh, you can check that out at digital.health. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Daniel. And also, I do agree with you. Very slowly, things are starting to a kind of take a turn reimbursement in, in Europe, in, in Germany, Netherlands, other countries really starting to prescribe apps and, and digital solutions. And everybody, please make sure you tap into is digital.elf, right, Daniel? Simple domain. Yep. It's yeah. easy to remember. Nice. Um, and, you know, and we also try and provide tools given that, you know, digital health is a broad term. It means different things to different people. Uh, you know, what are the current regulatory pathways in Europe uh, or the FDA, which is moving into you know, software as a medical device and speeding things up. What are the latest journals that cover the evidence base uh, that's moving forward? Uh, what might be opportunities in global health? I think one of the big opportunities for, for digital mobile connected health is the idea that we can democratize healthcare. Almost everybody has a, a mobile phone or soon a smartphone. We're seeing platforms like Starlink from SpaceX give high speed internet to almost anywhere in the world. And so we're really, at a, at a point in time where these sort of technologies don't just need to be for sort of the, the Western world and those who have, are highly resourced, but really can give access to, you know, a clinic in rural Rwanda, uh, like a company called Ilara Health is using digital tools and diagnostics across Africa, or many other examples where we're trying to um, improve health equity, improve access, and then hopefully start to crowdsource some of our new solutions and knowledge so that um, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel around the world and we're gleaning information and using it in real time, anytime, anywhere. Oh, that's fantastic. A great, great resource. Uh, make sure everybody can uh, check that out. And Daniel, I really appreciate your time and your area sharing your expertise and with me and everything and everybody at the channel. Uh, by the way, now is the YouTube channel, but also is uh, on podcast so everybody can listen to it when they go for a walk or working out and everything. Search for digital of series on um, on the podcast um, and the, the the last the I finish all my episodes Daniel uh, it's nice to see your boy anyway uh, 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 I finish all my episodes it's not really a question is one minute of fame okay so please talk about anything whatsoever that you wish a personal achievement a community I mean you have many professional athletes I mean you can talk about your great exponential uh, event when it comes back on. I mean, anything that you want to mention, please, over to you. One minute of time to round up. Well, I don't think it's about fame. I think it's now about um, collaboration and accelerating solutions.
for health and medicine around the world. I mean, the fact that we're uh, meeting virtually here and you've got many great listeners and folks innovating in all sorts of areas from video gaming to VR to blockchain to nanotech to sensors. You know, it's all about sort of connecting the dots and converging to see the challenges. It might be in PPE or testing or in therapeutics and next generation vaccines or digital yellow cards. It's about collaboration. What's been fun for me, you know, I, I founded and share a program called Exponential Medicine that we've been running since 2011, um, is to see some of these dots connect. What seemed to be science fiction, you know, 10, 11 years ago is now really starting to become reality. Um, and so our Exponential Medicine community, we're gonna grow that both virtually and hopefully back in person uh, in the next year or so. Um, so if you go to exponentialmedicine.com, you can see it and slash videos, you'll see a lot of great content, but I encourage folks to help collaborate wherever you are with other people outside of traditional healthcare. That's where the magic happens. That's where you can kind of best combine forces. And so we can all have our, our minute or hour or, or uh, decade of fame. Um, there's a famous quote from uh, Bill Gates that we tend to um, um, overestimate what will happen in a year and underestimate what will happen in a decade. And I think the next decade, you know, the, the roaring 20s will make the last 10 years look slow. And it's an opportunity for all of us across health, medicine, technology uh, to really catalyze that moving forward and really, you know, even take the opportunity of COVID uh, to, to reshape health and medicine around the planet. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Daniel, before we leave, uh, I cannot uh, not ask you what's the name of your boy and, and how old is he anyway? <laughs> that was Noah. He's almost five oh, right. um, and he's very curious. I mean, you know, it's really interesting to think about the fact that, you know, kids today, we think about um, longevity, but we also want to think about health span. You know, kids today might easily live to 100. How do you think about educating them in today's world or keeping them healthy? He, he knows about his heart and lungs and basic physiology. I have this augmented reality T-shirt from a company called Curoscope out of the UK where you can kind of use your, your, your tablet and see through their body with augmented reality. And that's great to get kids. And I'm, in, I'm trained in pediatrics and internal medicine. Pediatrics, get them while they're young. I think one of the best things we can do is help uh, the health of our kids by helping them understand physiology, medicine, and health so they live long and healthy lives. Oh, fantastic. I mean, and suddenly it is coming back to you. Do you want to say anything to my friends here about health and medicine? This is Noah. And Hello, he, Noah. He wants, to, you? he wants to watch a television show. But here's the future, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll go find the remote in a second. Uh, Daniel, what do I to to round up? That's a truly personal way, and also you really mentioned how technology has impacted humanity, and also might drive uh, the young generation up to a hundred years old, which is uh, fantastic. I want to thank you again for your time, and uh, if you want to give any final thoughts or anything, I'm going to round up now. Sure, I think I guess a final thought is that um, you know. I run this program, Exponential Medicine, which is around the thought that technologies are accelerating. I mean, we have, I thought we were gonna talk about wearables. I've got all sorts of fun demos from, from under wearables, <laughs> to of course, you know, breathables to, you know, all these new you know, cheap technologies, which are becoming ubiquitous. And, you know, the opportunity, you know, for kids like mine, you know, even my, my older son, Leo, he wanted to get a Fitbit because he wanted to track his steps and his sleep. And so it's an opportunity to, you know, uh, engage you know, not with these as just, you know, sending data and being a bit of a toy, but to get, get folks really engaged in their in their health, particularly early. And that can provide the best window for a long, healthy life because it's our, it, our genetics are important, but really our behaviors, particularly over long periods of time, you know, sleep, stress, not too much alcohol, um, uh, enough social engagement, all those can start to be measured. At the same time, we want to be careful about not, not being too big brother and being too overwhelmed with tracking our data and being quantified selfers. I think that the, the challenge and the opportunity is to move from, you know, basic wearables. And as you know, you know, the, the first Fitbit only came out in 2009, like 11 years ago. Imagine what we'll have in terms of wearables and invisibles and ambient sensing in another 10 years. The trick is not to make it control us and be over overwhelmed by trying to track some sort of step. But give it a way to layer into our lives that matches each of us and our personality and our age and our culture and our language. So they can give us, you know, appropriate nudges when needed, help us stay on track and give us early warning if we're moving towards a disease or other challenge. And also give us the opportunity to be data donors and share our information. Just like, you know, we drive with Google Maps and Waze, we're all sharing a bit of data and build a better driving map. We can think about all being data donors and contributing to sort of the, the hive mind of, of healthcare and, you know, 
even found recently that your wearable can detect if you have COVID, et cetera. And we're gonna see really interesting ways to integrate these technologies, but we still need to be think, think smartly about how they integrate in our lives so they're not overwhelming, but they really catalyze a new sort of uh, generation of, of smart, healthy people like my kids. Um, there's a phrase I love from Regina Dugan, who used to run DARPA, uh, the big research group out of, uh, out of the military in the US. And the phrase is, you know, Sputnik sparked the space age and COVID is sparking a bit of a health age. And now it's an opportunity for all of us to collaborate with all the amazing technologies that are here and the ones that are coming on this exponential from the $10 genome to the ubiquitous sensing to magical AI and robotics and synthetic biology to, to put those dots together to, to help us reshape healthcare, biopharma, research, public health, you know, everywhere, anywhere to drive better outcomes, lower costs and a, a healthier planet. Brilliant. What, what a way to finish. Dano, thank you so much for your time. I wish you stay well and safe. And um, yeah, I'm going to just address our uh, viewers and listeners. If you want to say goodbye, nice, nice to see you, Daniel, anyway. Goodbye. Hopefully see you in person soon. Stay healthy, get vaccinated when you can, and, uh, and, um, and go forth and create the future. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And thank you to all our viewers. Please make sure you subscribe and share with your uh, communities in healthcare these great insights. And I'll see you next week.